right, a very warm welcome to One on One. Of course, as we promised, the whole of this week is bringing them back to the limelight and asking the question, a very simple question, where are they today? And of course, today in the program, we are honored to have none other than one of my role models in the media industry. I say this and I repeat, Jean-Claude Gaga. Welcome to One on One, sir. Thank you, Eugene. I'm yeah. quite humbled for, for, for such an introduction. Yes. yes. It's good to see you again, man. Uh, man, I've been all around. No, I, I, I never mean, left. Uh, in the media, I mean. At you never invited me earlier, so had you done that? You know, we had to prepare. We had to prepare and, and uh, saving the best, uh, the last of the best, okay? Yeah. But then, thank you so much for being here. And the reason we're here is to try and trace uh, uh, your roots in the media mm -hmm. and why you left and where you are today. Because most people used to love watching you. Most people used to wake up and say they'll welcome you in their living rooms uh, through the TV to listen to you or to watch you bring them the news mm -hmm. and, 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 and other shows. But then all of a sudden, some of them just no longer see you on the TV and, or no longer meet you. Mm -hmm. And they're wondering where you are today. We'll get deeper into that. But then let's look at your, your media mm -hmm. uh, background. Uh, maybe if you could just bring us to speed as to how it all started and how you found your way into the media. Well, uh, unfortunately for some of those that you call my fans, probably they'll find it surprising. Yes. But it was, uh, I, I may say it was a bit accidental. <coughs> way back when I was still young, I used to enjoy reading a lot, reading newspapers. Mm -hmm. If you give me a stash of newspapers this high in volume, I'll go through it until the end. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit different when it comes to other things. Uh, so my passion for reading, I think, introduced me in the early stages uh, to the media, but also TV. Uh, I sometime back mentioned this to a trainer, and uh, she found it surprising when I said, uh, Oprah Winfrey, mm. uh, who is one of the people that actually uh, g drove this passion into me of uh, TV. Mm. So I used to watch Oprah a lot. So I think a combination of this uh, passion for reading magazines and newspapers and Oprah. watching TV, mm. Oprah, uh, is where I ended up in the media. Then I started sometime in 2002 at uh, Radio Rwanda. I was still much younger then, mm -hmm. I hadn't grade, mm -hmm. and uh, it was something, it was an honor that finally I got a chance to join the media, and then I was employed as a, as a news broadcaster on Radio Rwanda. Mm. Uh, at the time, I think it was one of, if not the only, uh, radio station. So to me, uh, this, is, this is where the whole journey began. Okay. Then a couple of years later, about two and a half years, I was introduced to TV. Uh, again, it was a bit accidental because I remember uh, my former director then, uh, Joseph uh, Bideri, just summoned me to his office to a surprise that I did not know that was going to be uh, the reason why I was being summoned. I get there and he tells me, I want to send you to TV. Uh, and I was like, no. Uh, TV has never crossed my mind. It has never been part of my um, Anything you thought about, this. yes. And mm. then, he told me, you know, through it all, to cut a long story short, he told me, I'm sure you'll thank me later. Mm -hmm. And to tell the truth, when I was leaving, uh, five years later, I think I was so much in love with TV than any other part of, uh, of media. Mm. So, 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 so let's talk of, of, of this word you choose to use very carefully, accidental. Uh, what do you really mean by that? D didn't you ever go through specific media training to prepare you for this? Never before. Never ever. Uh, the training came along the way. The training came when we were at uh, Radio Rwanda. Mm -hmm. We were so fortunate at the time, we were getting several trainings from uh, very experienced trainers uh, from, from world over. Mm -hmm. And it was through that kind of training that actually built us to be uh, the professionals that at one time we, we were. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason, actually. I said it was a bit accidental. Not mm -hmm. that I chose, this is what I'm going to do. And mm -hmm. I just so, so what exactly did you ever want to be? Because most of us are asked this question when we are young, that, uh, you know, Gaga, when you grow up, what do you want to be? What was that thing then? My passion was to be a doctor. You wanted to treat people? I wanted to treat people. I wanted to be this guy that uh, makes a difference in people's lives. Uh, you walk in sick, you walk out alive and kicking. 
Uh, but partly again, uh, because I was being inspired by my uncle, mm. who is a medical doctor, quite renowned uh, in Uganda. So I was uh, under his care at the time. And so the only way I felt to, to, to return the favor of why I was, uh, he was hosting me, I felt like this is it, I need to be a doctor. But also beyond that, uh, some of these subjects throughout high school that uh, I used to be passionate about was biology. Mm -hmm. So I felt that I was destined to be one. All my friends felt I was destined to be one. And suddenly they were seeing me into something totally different, different. Uh, that I still had a passion for. Mm. Was it by choice that you never became a doctor or what did really happen? It wasn't by choice. I did not make it to be admitted at medical school. Mm -hmm. So. I really, I, I flunked to be, to be honest, to, to join medical school, mm -hmm. and it came as a surprise because uh, I think from uh, the very elementary levels, I was, I was among the best scoring guys in terms of uh, science subjects, and only the last minute I felt like no. This is not it. I switched. I went into diplomacy and international relations, which led me into uh, something different. We are talking about. All right. So, so th this brings me back to the question of, of the performance uh, record of of media personalities and media houses, because 2002 coming to 2008 uh, up to around 2011. Nine. To well, I left 2009. 11, 2009. Yes. But then this is that period that most of the time the media personalities or reporters and journalists were receiving a bashing from different quarters mm -hmm. in the society. Most of them saying these people are not professional. Some of them even not wanting to talk to them. Uh, how easy was it for you during those times to, to deliver your work, you know, to do your job amidst all this kind of criticism that the media was receiving? I think where the key word here I would say is focus. Uh, I had the focus for the media. When I really got into it, I immediately understood what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be. So I wanted to really leave a mark in the media. Uh, but if you look back, my line of uh, performance was never so much into politics. It was mostly to do with uh, human interest stories. Uh, it was more leisure, it was more entertainment. So I think um, these, these are some of the key subjects that resonate with the masses. Mm -hmm. So probably the mistake we make uh, as media practitioners is to think that for you to make a mark and to be felt, uh, your, your presence to be felt, is for you to indulge more into politics mm -hmm. than any other field. Yet, you could strike a balance. Even when you, even even if we take that to be the case, if mm. you want to venture into politics, there's always a professional of doing it. Mm. You don't just wake up and you think just because you've written an article uh, about the president of the republic, mm -hmm. and you feel that suddenly people should recognize Eugene Anangui mm. as the best political mentor, the best political analyst. So for me, I feel like uh, most of our practitioners tend to really skip so many levels uh, to where they think they should be uh, before actually the public. Expe uh, gives them that platform because mm -hmm. uh, I believe that the, me the public is actually the best judge. Mm -hmm. So if you can let the media judge you, mm -hmm. uh, then you take it in step, uh, mm -hmm. then you can achieve anything that mm -hmm. you want. So passion for me was the thing. That is what focus. drove you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and focus. So at the end of the day then, w if, if you were to sum up and say this is what it takes to be a journalist in Rwanda, if, if you would just describe being a journalist in Rwanda, how it is like during your journalistic lifetimes. Mm. Uh, I, I'm not so sure because we'll touch on that if you're still one. Because some people say once a journalist, always one. Yeah. You will tell me more about that a bit later in the program. But how would you describe being a journalist in Rwanda? I think being a journalist in Rwanda is, um, to, to be honest, it's, it's one of the green fields that we still have. Uh, I know probably this contradicts probably something you'll say, then if it is mm -hmm. green, why did you why leave? Why did you leave, yes. Uh, it is, it's totally a different reason, but to me, uh, I feel like as soon as I stepped out of the media, I think viewing it from outside mm -hmm. helped me actually understand it much further and deeper, because that's when I realized that there is a lot of opportunities in the media. Mm -hmm. Let's take your example. Eugene Anangwe, you came in as a radio personality. Mm -hmm. All we knew about was your voice, your voice, your voice. Then suddenly today, you cannot avoid Eugene on any media platform that you use. Whatever, mm -hmm. social, otherwise, you'll find Eugene. Mm -hmm. So why? Uh, because you've been able to 
I, to, to diversify mm -hmm. and, and push it further. Uh, unlike the case where most people think this is my niche, if it's print, it's print. It stay there. I don't stay there. Mm -hmm. No, come on, if you're in print, just to have uh, uh, maybe a program. You can migrate with uh, CFM or any other station and have a, a program maybe uh, to try something in broadcasting. Mm -hmm. You can do the same with TV. You can do uh, blogging. You can do, you know, there's a lot that you can do. So in Rwanda, this is a field that I think we have not explored a lot. Uh, and, and I'm being very sincere. There's quite a lot that we can do. Mm -hmm. And from which we can actually build a better future, uh, a better lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, know, I know the common saying here is, uh, you know, it's a bit difficult to make a living with, with the media, but that's very wrong. Mm -hmm. if, you, if your view is quite narrow, definitely. You cannot make you money. Yeah. But then, Gaga, you describe it as a green field. And definitely brings us to a big question. Mm -hmm. Then why did you leave? Why did you leave? Okay, uh, this is a personal decision I made. Uh, I'm a bit stubborn. I felt like at the time I had grown and I was hitting the ceiling. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was hitting the ceiling. There was no more space for you there to no grow. There was no more space to grow because look here. I, I used to do um, editing. Uh, at the time, you could be your own cameraman, your own sound person, your own editor. You do the cutting alone, you do the script, and you voice it, and you present. So I felt like having gone through all this from radio to your TV to this. More, more, you'd learned enough. Yeah, at one time, actually, I was doing small time contributions to, to the New Times for. for and a few of them made it to the front page. Mm -hmm. And I felt like uh, there wasn't so much challenging. So I wanted something challenging. And then suddenly, of course, there was this much bigger opportunity than the green that I was describing. And I felt like, yeah, why not? I took it up. Again, uh, it is something I'm still smiling about. You're happy. I'm you don't happy. regret ever leaving. I honestly do not. Mm -hmm. I do not. But mm -hmm. I will say uh, this, uh, and I'll be on record that I'm still a lot nostalgic about media. Mm -hmm. So I always hope that one day, probably, I'll have a chance to come back. Okay. Uh, that one time I attempted it, but uh, it, did, it did not work out. Not from my side, but from the side of the people that uh, we're working with. Probably one day Eugene will be able to, Who knows? to employ me. Who knows? Yeah. But then, Gaga, tell me, because when you say that um, you found other greener pastures, but and also you say personal reasons. Mm. Uh, you know, some people may not really agree with you, like in the face value. They might say there's something is hiding. Uh, that's not particularly true. Why? Why? Why am I saying this? Because mm -hmm. most of our top cream media personalities mm -hmm. have left the profession mm -hmm. with one particular explanation mm -hmm. that there is no enough pay in the media industry in Rwanda. The media industry is still young. To, to be able to sort my needs and, and the employers don't pay me on time and they pay me peanuts. And there's this opportunity at a PR firm or, an, or a corporate institution that wants me to be a PR uh, or, and they take me and give me this other opportunity. So why should I not leave? So w what's that part of the reason? I think it's all about negotiating. Mm -hmm. uh, Eugene, you've been here th since 2008. Mm -hmm. I'm very sure that there are several other people out here that have probably brought better proposals for you to do and probably you've not moved because of the bargaining that you've had to do along mm -hmm. the way. Uh, to be frank, it is all about how you begin. First of all, make yourself relevant, make yourself valuable for your employer to feel like if your gene leaves, then there's a huge stake that I'm losing. Mm -hmm. So before you get that, then you cannot cut any, any discussion with the employer. Mm -hmm. Once you've, you've built that profile and you feel like at this level, I can now dictate the terms with my employer. Mm -hmm. By dictating, I mean I can now negotiate for a higher, uh, a higher pay. Mm -hmm. And then definitely you'll get it. So. For me, uh, I've seen this debate a lot. Uh, it's just that, like I said, I alluded to it earlier. Uh, I've seen several journalists, and some of them are still practicing in Rwanda. Just because of a simple uh, article, of a simple uh, production they've made, and suddenly they feel like I, I, I matter that much. And this is, uh, to, to a, is also happening to a sister profession of, of, of the music industry. Mm -hmm. Someone releases one song and suddenly feels that we should recognize them wherever they walk, mm -hmm. whenever they walk in, should and suddenly them. these are superstars. Mm. No, that is not the case. Uh, the, the individuals that will go through this 10 years to be recognized, there are some that will be lucky to, to, to make that mark a couple of months, a couple of uh, much shorter years than than 10. Mm. So my advice is, first make yourself relevant. Build that profile. 
and let the public judge by the way mm -hmm. so that's when you try to make a move and say i want to switch it can be from cfm to something else mm -hmm. and and you employ i feel like i cannot do without eugene once you have that bargaining power then anything is possible anything is possible yeah. but then when you make your name and you become very relevant mm -hmm. there are certain institutions that will not want to lose you because they know your value definitely in this particular case i'm talking about your situation mm -hmm. wasn't there ever any struggle to keep you never I'll be honest, there wasn't, uh, because I tendered in my resignation at the time. And I think about two or three days later, I got a response, and I was happy to move. Nobody said, no, 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 we cannot lose Gaga. This was from probably my colleagues, uh, but uh, I never got that from management. Do you think then you had not yet created that niche? Uh, had you had not yet made them really believe that they cannot do without probably, you? Probably, probably. Uh, so like, again, again, I'll let the public to judge that. So I felt like at the time, I'd, like I said, professional, I felt like I was hitting the ceiling a lot. So I felt like I need to, to move on. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably... I wasn't in position uh, to bargain for me to stay. Mm -hmm. And the conditions that were prevailing at the time, again, were not enough for me to want to warrant to that even I stay. stay. Yes. So I felt like, you know what, I'm doing all this, I'm, I'm trying this and that, but I don't feel like this is a place for me to keep growing. So mm -hmm. probably the next thing, my dream had always been to move from uh, our, our humble TVR to, to a global uh, probably uh, employer like uh, CNN Al Jazeera so that was always my dream so when I felt like that wasn't coming I took uh, the next a best thing uh, that, that, that was available mm -hmm. so are you still chasing this dream uh, I at the moment I'm not uh, probably on a very part-time uh, basis mm -hmm. I may but I wouldn't say this is something that uh, I consider to be able to do at the moment mm -hmm. but like I said, it's all about passion. Uh, given a chance, I would do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would do it at a part-time basis until a point where I feel comfortable enough again to go uh, full, full, full time. Okay. So, Uburi, where are you nowadays? Uber what are you? Uh, <laughs> hey, by the way, your Kenyaronda is improving. Uh, uh -huh. You can't me. <laughs> so, Uburi is the subject here. It is. <laughs> uh, today, I'm working for one of the leading, the best, I think, the leading telecom in the country, which mm -hmm. is MTN Rwanda. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in mobile money, I'm in charge of channel development and it's quite an interesting field it's uh, I'm really happy where I am mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm glad that I'm making another humble contribution where I am and again I'm letting the people judge so when I hear this from uh, two customers I feel like then I'm making their lives a, lo a whole lot brighter so that's and you're happy. you're happy you're happy where happy. you are so so looking back at yourself gaga when you're young moving on to primary school uh, getting into secondary uh, high school then college or university getting your job at uh, ronda tv leaving you know all these stages and now where you are today when you look back what are those things that and key life lessons that you think you take away from your journey to where you are today one is uh, is to keep to keep the base to, to keep a small circle of friends and make sure you keep in touch. So there are a couple of friends that uh, I've I've kept in touch with uh, in the media fraternity that I worked with, and these people have been very useful. They come in handy on several things, several projects. Mm -hmm. So mine is to make sure that uh, if I'm working today at uh, MTN. My dream is that when I leave, I will leave when every person I've been working with, rubbing shoulders with, feels like, man, you shouldn't have left. Man, I, I wish you could have stayed. Mm -hmm. For me, that is what gives me satisfaction, uh, to feel it more from my peers, much more than even from my employer and, and any other person. So number one is keep, 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 keep in touch. Uh, stay in touch with your friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's your slogan. Mm -hmm. If you stay in touch with the people that, uh, that have seen you grow, sometimes you may want to go back to the same uh, for, for, for advice, because these are the people that know you. They know your weaknesses, they know your strength. And of course, number two is to really have a focus of what you want in life. I always had short-term uh, projections uh, that I may call targets in life. I would say, in the next five years, I want to do this. 
So setting myself these targets mm -hmm. uh, for five years, uh, God willing, I make it through the five years, then I would evaluate and say, did I do it? If not, what did I do wrong for me to be able to recover and, and, and do it? But people say that that is not easy. That is not practical. This is this is the case of, 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 of the, the resolutions, the New Year resolutions. You have them and then you're into January, midway, you've lost focus. Eugene. How do you keep a, a track of five years plan and you even do the evaluation? If you cannot do that simple thing for yourself, mm -hmm. then what else can you do? If you cannot plan for five years for yourself, what you want to do, what you want to achieve, not what your employer wants, mm -hmm. not what your spouse wants, mm -hmm. not what your girlfriend or kids want. No. For Something yourself. That you're for yourself. And you say, this is me, I want this in five years. So what do you want if in five years? If you cannot, years? What do you want I want to retire. In five years, you want yes, to retire. I want to retire from being a salaried employee to being someone who creates jobs and who makes a difference in my society. Mm -hmm. And uh, God willing, I'll be able to achieve that. Uh, how far are you closer to that on dream a scale, or that plan on of a five scale years? Of plan? Zero to ten, I think I'm on six. You're on six. Yes. So meaning you're almost on year three. I'm past, I'm past fifty percent. So. So you've passed. You're almost on year three into the five year plan. No. No, no, no. Uh, yes, exactly. I, I'm almost on year three to the five-year plan. So probably in the next three to five, I shouldn't be the guy that has to wake up and make sure how my employer expects me to be at work at this time, how my employer expects me to have done this. No, no. Mm -hmm. I need to be the guy that runs my business, that calls the shots, that sleeps when I want, mm -hmm. that goes to the gym when I feel like, mm -hmm. that meets Eugene when I want. When you want, yeah. and comes to one-on-one -on -one when you want, yeah. and you can choose to come or not come. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Sometimes, you know, you, you always have to pull strings, and I'll definitely come when I like it or not. <laughs> so, Gaga, you know, honestly speaking, you seem to be a person who, even from the, 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 the kind of advice that you're giving in terms of know what you want, it's like, on, on, on some of your, uh, you know, stuff, when, when you're at work, when you're employed, when you're doing something for someone, at least also know what you personally want. Mm. But then, looking at our media profession, we've touched this a bit, but then maybe going deeper into it, the bargaining power mm -hmm. that our journalists have today, do you think this is what is probably killing the industry already? Because you'll find that probably we may not have that proper bargaining power like in your day when you said i had i hadn't probably made my name i wasn't able also in a position to to say these conditions i cannot be able to cope with do you feel that the current situation in rwanda makes it harder for individual journalists at individual media houses from having a proper bargaining power to be fair yes to be fair yes uh, the media practitioners themselves are at still at growing phase. Mm -hmm. The media owners themselves could even be much lower than that. So you'll find a person opening up a media house, but the people he's employing actually have a better vision of what the media industry or the media landscape in Rwanda is, more than the person who's employing them. So that, of course, you see there's already an imbalance. You cannot, you cannot uh, strike any, any, any deal or bargain with the employer at that level. So to be fair, yes, conditions at the moment sometimes do not uh, enable the journalist to be to have enough bargaining power. Mm -hmm. uh, that is that is on the part of the people that are employing them. But to be honest, uh, Eugene, you've seen a couple of Rwandans now joining uh, Global. Uh, it's a BBC. We have on VOA. Uh, th we, th these people are people that we started with, are people that were ministers. But because of their discipline, because of their focus, because of their passion, because of knowing what they wanted, I think this is how they ended up where they are. Mm -hmm. uh, very s uh, today we have one on DW, uh, my former colleague uh, Isaac. But looking at how he's gone through it, uh, I mean, all the way from uh, Radio Rwanda, he at one time he was stringing for a couple of uh, uh, radio stations and, and global newspapers. Mm. And today is on DW. We have Eddie Rema on VOA. Mm -hmm. We have the Kasim Kairas and, and the like on, on BBC. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's, it's, and when you look back, if you want to examine these guys and you evaluate them when they were still in Rwanda, these are the very people that we could see that coming. So 
again, not wanting to blame it so much on the employers, mm -hmm. because that would be so unfair, mm -hmm. they, they are not there to determine your life, I would say that yes, conditions are still not yet favorable, considering the, 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 the employers that we have in the market, mm. but also the people need to make, up, to make their mark, uh, they need to make their name, they need to move next. So the most important the thing is, is, is create a niche for yourself and make a name for it yourself. It starts with you. As, 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 as a media uh, personality. Yes. Regardless of the situations, regardless of the conditions that you're working in. Mm -hmm. Right, so what do you miss mo most in, 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 in the media industry that, that probably you would feel so good having those opportunities, those privileges? What are they, or those people? Well, some of them I think may not make it to the on air today. Uh, mm -hmm. They will be, I'll, I'll, I'll tend to keep those <laughs> <laughs> for when Why are you being diplomatic? When Come we on. Off the mics, I'll say tell them, you. say them. Some of these are small favors, Ken. <laughs> hey, know? like which ones? Uh, several times, uh, my wife, uh, we always joke about this. If we're going somewhere where we need to queue, and uh, she, we notice we're going to be there for, uh, for a couple of hours, she always says, come on, why don't you come and queue, you know? People tend to recall, oh, that is, sometimes uh, it's unfair. Mm -hmm. You see someone going an extra mile to make you skip and, and get the service while others Because of the respect that they but have sometimes for you. if my child, I know, uh, mm. some, some time back I went to my, my son who had about 39 degrees, mm -hmm. and, and really, I wasn't that patient. Mm -hmm. And of course, if in that moment I get such a favor, I definitely will take it. Mm -hmm. So that's one of them. That is one of them, mm. uh, but uh, on the low, low, low on the list. Uh -huh. Yeah, but of course, uh, mu much more than anything, uh, I just missed it, the ambience of, of knowing that with the power of, of you sitting in front of a camera, you can make a difference. You can you can make a difference not in just someone's life, mm. but on, in a couple of, 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 of fields. Uh, the times when you, I would do something uh, that I would think is quite humble, and suddenly, I get uh, feedback from the public like, wow, <coughs> that was one of the best things we've seen on TV. Mm -hmm. That was one of the best documentaries ever, mm -hmm. some of which are still running today. So for me, that, that makes me feel like, really? So it, it really would boost, give me the boost to feel like, you know what? You need to do much better than this next time. So mm -hmm. there is this thing of the impact we make as journalists in the people's lives. Uh, it could be their personal lives, it could be just when they're seated in their sitting rooms enjoying a few moments of TV, and uh, you are the reason for them to be there. So I tend to miss that a lot. You uh, miss that. Today's is, is it where I am today, it's so different. It's very hard, it's, it's, really, it's really different. You cannot be in, in, in someone's living room uh, 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 via TV. So looking at the whole changes, I mean the, the metamorphosis that has happened today from the time you left, 2009 you said, yes. and, and, and we are now in 2015, <laughs> A lot has happened. We are no longer having our rainfall, which probably by that time you were in. Mm. Now we have RBA. We have the digital migration happening. I mean, w what do you see and how do you see the media playing out? The things that are going to be change makers or some of the things that are going to change in this whole metamorphosis that is going on? Uh, well, uh, that's a good one. At the time when I left TV, uh, it took me a while actually to, uh, to get back to TV. Uh, it's, I don't know why, but it felt like I was losing interest to even get time to be patient enough to watch television, because mm -hmm. probably the content at the time. Uh, but today, uh, I always clash with my son who wants to watch uh, his Cartoon Network mm -hmm. or something. And when I want just a few minutes on RBA, because mm -hmm. I feel like the quality of, 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 of uh, what they're hearing is something that will take uh, some of my time. So I've seen a lot of changes, uh, a lot of growth. At the time, we used to have a couple of a table like this with a couple of microphones. I couldn't see Eugene properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, today, you do this, and suddenly, in a couple of minutes, I'm able to to to, to view it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, a lot that has changed. Uh, but again, uh, I, I wouldn't say really. This is this is this is the best we should we should be able to set up for. There's a lot more uh, mm -hmm. that we need to see uh, with the industry. But I will just give this small analogy. If you are, I tend to compare with with our neighbors, uh, when I look at Kenya, mm -hmm. it's not far from us. Uh, it's uh, just a couple of hours. Uh, the, d the demographics are not so so different uh, from Rwanda. 
But uh, one would say, definitely, one who has watched it too, will say, why is it that the content there, the, the, it's much, the, the media itself is quite vibrant mm -hmm. compared to ours. So mm -hmm. can we learn from them? Can we learn the best practices from them before we even look at CNN and Al Jazeera and mm -hmm. BBC? So you should start close at home. Let's start close. Close at home. In Kenya Rwanda, they say, Ija Kurisha, Ihera Kurugu. Ija Kurisha, Ihera Kurugu. I will take you through that. Oh yeah? Yes. Okay. When before the cow goes to graze far, farther than its, its, its surroundings, there's enough grass around that it can start with. So we should start. So start from here, from and then here. and then we we aspire to be like like the rest. Like the rest. So I've seen a lot of growth. I've seen a lot of talent coming in, much younger talent. And uh, for me, my advice is to even the media owners is to let young talent take charge. Okay. When you let young people take charge, you definitely see wonders because these people are very motivated. They know a lot more than 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 a certain. Uh, class of people that then was running the uh, business. So there's a lot of innovation that they bring along. So give them the, the power to, to take charge, to take responsibility, to be uh, the editors, to be the uh, program managers, mm. and then you'll see. Uh, so that means you're, you're officially saying that they should lock you out. Not yet, Eugene. Not yet. Don't be deceived <laughs> by the gray here. Don't be deceived by the gray. We should so be deceived by I still have something to put You're still the table. among them, right? Yeah. The young, in terms of uh, the young at heart as well. But then, uh, in closing, maybe if you could share with us that moment or those moments that probably uh, either were embarrassing moments or some of those moments you never forget in your career on TV. What are those things? What really happened? Well, there are quite a number of them, and uh, this I'm sure everybody knows. Mm -hmm. uh, the time you're in the middle of uh, reading the news, and suddenly there's a power cut. Mm -hmm. You know? Or I uh, say the next story, Eugene visited ABC, and suddenly there's a soccer match coming. You know, we used to have this, some of these uh, hitches in, in, in the former hour and four. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, some of those were a bit embarrassing. But of course, uh, one thing I'll never forget was a time when we did not have uh, teleprompters. Mm -hmm. So you had to go through scripts, paper. Many papers, a paper, heap of papers. After yes, paper. yes. And you know what? We used to joke about it at the time, I remember. Have you seen a chicken trying to take water? Mm -hmm. You know how it does mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. It first bends. I think takes some and then it looks up. Yes. up. So we used to say we like chicken taking water mm -hmm. at the time. So. At the time, actually, we used to joke about some of our colleagues who would say would not balance the period you're facing down and the period and really you're, you're elevating up. again. Mm -hmm. Some of them would go through a script from top to bottom before they raise. And then they go through the news and then goodbye. <laughs> and you're like, so he comes to say <laughs> Good. hello, and then he's here, he's just giving you <laughs> this, and then suddenly saying bye. So s some of those moments I, I miss. We used to make fun of each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, again, there are some of these challenges. Uh, I was so privileged to have had the chance of serving on some of the foreign missions uh, with the head of state, mm -hmm. where you'd have to be, uh, you know, a cameraman, a sound man, A, B, C, D, and you had to beat around a swarm of journalists, mm -hmm. of cameras at the UN, and be able to get the right footage and make sure you piece it together, you do your stand-up, and make sure you package it in time for it to be broadcast back home, considering the time difference. Uh, so it was some of the few challenges that actually shaped the kind of person that... So you missed that, 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 that challenge? I missed, I the missed pressure. that a lot. The pressure. Working under pressure. And then suddenly feeling like... I made it. It's yeah. on air. Yeah. It's on air. I miss some of some of those things. Okay. Yeah. But you said earlier on that you never know. Maybe very soon you might be back. Yeah, I keep my chances open. So and I will say stay tuned. What would it take? What would it take to have you back on it's air? It's a just a dialogue. It's a dialogue. A dialogue there's no formula, there's no format that no you create in your just mind. Just a dialogue. Do you want me to give my number on air? <laughs> No, but anyway, it's just a dialogue, and definitely I'll be happy to, to contribute again. Okay. Yeah. I voilà. hope I'll still be relevant. Yeah, I'm, I have a feeling so. Who knows? Maybe. Mm -hmm. There's still some people who really feel that uh, they, they would still love to listen and watch you on, on air. I'll put this now to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you said in the opening on Twitter, I've been seeing the people that uh, inspired you when you're joining. Mm -hmm. What was it that inspired you about me? The confidence, mm -hmm. the presence. That's all you need. 
that's all you need and that's what you had mm -hmm. and definitely uh, there weren't many of, of, of you and Eddie and I wonder where he is Eddie's back in Uganda mm -hmm. he's doing quite well also mm -hmm. uh, with UBC mm -hmm. so a couple of times we tend to talk and chat so he's doing quite well okay yeah so Gaga I want to thank you so much thank you so much for being on one-on-one -on -one today thank you it's too. been an honor having you over here and I'll give you one last opportunity mm -hmm. on the show today maybe you'll have more opportunities later on but on the show today to talk to your fans and as you finish you'll sign out okay. as John Crow Gaga so How you look at this do camera <laughs> do it like this, this like in the old while, days six years I've already <laughs> picked a lot of dust yes that's so go. well uh, first of all to my number one fan here is Eugene Anangwe I'm really humbled to have been given this opportunity uh, to come back into the studio again and of course more than anything I'm humbled that I've shared a microphone with you today to the rest of you there on uh, that have kept, uh, have stayed in touch with me on social media, on other media, I am really uh, humbled again to, to, to have had this chance to say once again hello to you. And I'm still out there, and hopefully uh, one day I'll be able to come back and continue interacting with you like we used to do. As of now, goodbye for now. You never say your name? I used to. Oh, <laughs> you never used to you say see, your I name. told you. I used to. You know, there's one thing. Just because I've had a goodbye for now. Someone used to tell me, like, you know, you used to always say goodbye, goodbye for, for now. now. Why? Yeah. For now. For now. So just for now. Next. In the next session, I'll be back. Of course, Jean Claude Gaga is the name. You never change. <laughs> yeah. Gaga, Asante Sana. Thank, Thank you so too. much once again for your time. There you have it. John Claude Gaga coming on one on one in the Ububari His series. It's still ongoing. We have lots more lined up for you. Some of those faces, those voices, those names, the people that you really loved watching or following, and then all of a sudden you lost track of them. We're bringing them right here on the program, and you too can share with us. Let us know who those people are. Use the hashtag Ububarihe, and we'll definitely get in touch with them. Or you can as well use the hashtag 101RW. Let's keep in touch as always. As for now, I'm going to use his lines. Goodbye for now. I'm Eugene Anangwe. Ciao. Gaga, thank you. You're welcome, bro. <laughs> thank you. That was good. <laughs>